Hey guys, welcome back to Mob Vlog. Here it is today, April 28th, 2021, and we're going to be talking about Jimmy the Bomber Katura. And of course, it's um Redness Day as well, so we have Red with us. Welcome back to Mob Vlog. How's it going today, Red? It's going pretty good. I've Excellent. got some allergies, but people put up with it, I guess. <laughs> you have allergies right now? Yeah, my eyes are really giving me a hard time. But then again, I went to the eye doctor today, and he told me, he said, uh, I've been looking at the computer screen too much, so he ordered me some uh, their blue tint or whatever glasses so I could watch the screen without causing my eyes any more damage. Very interesting. You could also get uh, you could. I mean, some displays have a setting where you can take the blue light out, uh, out of them. I know my phone does. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, very cool. Uh, people are coming into the room. Welcome everybody. I just wanted to say a couple of hellos. Jay Murphy, Matt Dini, um, Don, Pazalo, Pam Rudnick. How you guys doing? It's good to see you, Dave Grimp. Uh, it's good to be here today. It's good to be seen today. Leanne rolling along, rolling along, listening along. That's fantastic. Uh, good to see you, Tim Halverson. He said, hi, Red. Hey, Tim. How you doing, buddy? Hi, and, Pam. How you doing? <laughs> and and uh, we are... Hey, Joe. We don't want to forget Jay. And Jay, yes. <laughs> Jay, happy Redness Day. So, uh everybody's still coming into the room and jimmy katura is what we're going to talk about today um we're going to be talking about jimmy katura and getting into that and if you guys want to jump in and uh you know remember this is going to be an open forum uh after about 20 minutes so we'll uh so we'll open it up anyway to, to comments about the specific uh topic today all right um, hi, Pam. How are you? Bob, hello. It's good to see you guys. Uh, you know, I want to tell you guys something, too. If you were here last week, if you are here last week, I uh, I said to Red, I said, man, I said, I am feeling out of shape. I said, so uh, I said, I'm starting a keto diet like today, right? I'm starting today. And I said that live. I said I was going to do it. And um, I made a vlog every day on my personal channel, on my Adam Flowers YouTube channel. Every day I've done a vlog about what I'm eating, what I'm uh, doing, because I'm going to tell you guys this, listen up, listen up, because a lot of you guys are like our age, in between Red's age and my age, and uh, you know, you want to call it middle age, that's fine, I'm past middle age though, I'd say middle age to realistically was probably when I was 38, <laughs> something like that, so I mean, let's be honest, okay? 38, so, 38 is what, 72? Guys are like 50, they're like really. I'm middle aged. you know, how many guys live till they're 100? None, all right? So, well, I some won't. do, some do, some do. I gotta, I gotta deal with God and I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> and so far, so good, see? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I said, I, I want to go on. I want to go on. I want to have another cup of Joe and, uh, you know, I need to take care of my body. So I started this keto diet and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm six foot five. I was 280 pounds. That's what I started. I got my fat ass on the scale and I went, oh, I'm going to crush, crush this thing, you know? So I started it and, uh, I today believe this or not, I got on the scale today. I'm 270. I lost 10 pounds in the last seven days, in the first seven days of this. So anyways, I'm vlogging about it on my personal channel. There's a link in the description if you want to take a look. Um, I'm even putting recipes up of different things I'm eating, like the cauliflower pizza. Even Red tried that. That looks good. Yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. So Sean Pender, uh, you'll be 50 in July, man. I'm telling you, I'm right behind you, buddy. Um, so, all right. Well, there's there's a good group amount of you guys in there. I think it's time to get this thing uh get this thing rolling. So, Jimmy Katura, Jimmy the Bomber. Let's start with why they called him the Bomber. Where'd that come from? Originally, when Kurt Hansen introduced me to him, he called him the Owl. He didn't. I didn't hear the word Bomber till later. But the word Bomber came from. He said late. Somewhat. A lot of people said. He kind of invented in Chicago the bombs that they put in cars. When you turn the ignition, the bomb would go off. And as the owl, Jimmy the owl, 
he's they said he had very good night vision and he used to be able to see at night so he'd be a lookout when they were doing these kind of things right so that's something you just don't think about back in the day. 20s back in the 20s man yeah oh yeah, yeah you're just this, 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 this guy's pre-42 gang right oh yeah so yeah. this guy's running with al capone yes okay so so this guy is is old school old he's school. sicilian I yeah. remember him telling me one time uh, when he sent me on a trip to Las Vegas, he said uh, he showed me his shoes in the closet. He had 100 boxes, wooden boxes, and he had 100 pairs of shoes. And he said, when I come to America, I got enough shoes on my feet. He says, now I never go without shoes, ever. Wow. 100 pairs of shoes? They were all in little wooden Ooh. boxes you know, where you just slide them right out. Who in the hell has a hundred pairs of shoes? I never. I, I didn't dare look at his wife's closet. I don't think she had a hundred pairs. <laughs> but coming to the country barefoot and thinking that, I could see where he might want them. I got a hundred pairs of shoes, Red. <laughs> no shit, man. It's not a joke. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I got a hundred pairs of shoes. Uh, it's another story, man. I got a hundred pairs of shoes. I'm not lying. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just choking on what you said because you're the only person other than Jimmy Couture that I knew that had 100 pairs of shoes. <laughs> hey, man. This is size 16 foot. <laughs> a size 16 foot. Do you hear me? I, have ne I was never able to find shoes ever in my, ever in my life was able to find shoes. And then one day I walked into this uh, Goodwill store by just by chance. There were 100 pairs of shoes, size 16. I bought them all. Wow. Brand new. They were all brand new. Wow. Bas basketball star donated them all here in town. Crazy story, but anyway, so, sorry. Back when so, I went in the Marine Corps, they wouldn't have taken you in because your feet were too big for the boots. Seriously? Yeah. They, they didn't, didn't have anybody over a size 13. Okay. So, so Jimmy Katura and his 100 pairs of shoes. He sent you to Vegas to get a pair? Or he sent you to Vegas to do something and you got him a yes. pair? Yes, yes. And I, I, he was paying for the whole trip. And so um, I said, you know, what can I do for you? And he says, bring me back a nicer pair of shoes. <laughs> I wrote about that in my book. Yeah. He Didn't he happen to be wearing those pairs, uh, same pair of shoes too? Yes. The day when he was shot? The same pair. They were white patent leather and they had a silver buckle on them in the front. And when I turned on the uh, TV, I saw his uh, lights hanging out of the vehicle yeah. and you, they're kind of distorted, but you could see the shoes. They were, you know, really visible. Wow. What are the chances that he'd be wearing the same pair of shoes that you got him? I said that a lot. I'll tell you exactly. One out of a hundred. <laughs> See, See I'm putting it together. A year now. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> oh man! So he got the name the Bomber because you said he was good at making these bombs, and I understand he was doing a lot of taxi cab bombing. Is that what I yes. understand? Because that was, was the union. That was, was they were unionized. Yeah, what, what was going on there? Well, I wasn't around that. It was back in the twenties and thirties, but. Um, they were trying to control all the unions, really. I think it was uh, Paul Rica's idea or somebody. I'm not really a mob historian, so I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But somebody back there wanted to control all the unions. They wanted to have a piece of it. And uh, he was up and comer. You know, he was definitely a boss. He was a, I don't know how many people he killed in his lifetime, but he was a, an easygoing old man to me. He, he reminded me of my grandfather, <laughs> <laughs> just an easy go guy yeah yeah and uh and how did you how did you come to know uh jimmy i mean how you said you were introduced by uh, yeah kurt hansen kurt. works for jimmy mm -hmm. uh he ran a couple brothels and other things for him but he kind of belonged to jimmy and jimmy kurt was also a hitman kurt was a killer and so um he brought me over there one day Jimmy had a problem with um, his doorbell. His doorbell wasn't ringing, and there was something wrong with it. It was a beautiful house in Oak Lawn, 
gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And his kids live right down, you know, next door to him. They live kind of like a mall type thing. It's all on the same street. But anyway, um, uh, I knew something. I knew a little bit about electricity, a lot of it, really. And so um, I fixed a couple of things for Kurt. But he told me about the doorbell. And I said, I'll look at it. So I looked at it. And that closet that I was telling you about where the shoes were, up above it, there was a panel to get into the attic. And in the attic, there was a transformer. And the transformer was dead. It was totally dead. So I ran out to the hardware store, got back up there. And I think it was like 8 or $9 at that time, some small amount of money. I put a new transformer in, and all of a sudden it rang. And it was the first chimes. I saw chimes in movies, but I never saw chimes at home or at somebody's house. But it went ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. It kept doing that for a while. Mm hmm Wow, that's old school with the transformer up in the ceiling. I mean, nowadays, you know, look at her, get a, a doorbell and it's all wireless and you stick this here and put batteries in there. And you're, you're no, it was hardwired. It was hardwired. He was crazy. very I grateful. Remember. He was yeah. very grateful. He well, had a couple other things around the house he asked me to do after that. He, he, he smiled at me. He says, Oh, that's a nice. I like that. <laughs> he said, You fix that. For, can you look at this? <laughs> so he kind of liked me. Yeah, that's cool. So he was kind of a funny, uh, good sense of humor guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. A couple of times we went back and sat on his porch in the back, and he says, uh, do you want a beer? And I said, yeah. He, he sent his uh, wife to get it. He never got out of the chair. <laughs> He's very old school Italian. I mean, uh, did the he drink weight on the men, that's it. <laughs> did, did he drink the beer? Like old school, like in Italy, like because I hear in Europe they drink the beer. They just run a bucket of cold water, whatever the tap water is. They put the beers in the bucket, and that's the temperature they drink them at. Yes. Is that how he drank it? Yes. Warm. Well, it wasn't it wasn't hot, but it wasn't exactly. Yeah. 30, 40, 40 degrees. It wasn't forty degree beer. Yeah. No. Okay. So that I always thought that's kind of odd. That the Europeans drink their everything. They, I mean, everything. They don't use ice, period. They don't chill their wine. No, nothing. It's really, hmm, I don't know. It's not how it was in Calumet City, I tell you that, man. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Uh, so back so to Jimmy, back, back to Jimmy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, uh, Jimmy was... Uh, the boss of Chicago Heights okay. and that area, which was East Chicago, Indiana, and all that stuff. And uh, I'm speculating, it's only a guess on my part, that when Sam Giancana went to Mexico, he kind of lost his power. And okay. so they wanted him out. El Palado went in. Mm -hmm. And they had told him to retire. They had told Jimmy to retire. And he agreed. And he built this beautiful home in Scottsdale, Arizona. I saw it. It was gorgeous. I mean, he spent a lot of money on it. I mean, a lot of money. It's a mansion. He never moved. And he kept building up his army. He kept hiring people like Billy Dauber. He kept, uh, he kept hiring hitters, shooters. And uh, it became a, a war, the Chop Shop War, until they kidnapped him. Until they kidnapped him. They kidnapped him and brought him up to Wisconsin, and they tried to reason with him. And I don't know who did it, but whatever they said to him, he came back. He was shook up. But mm -hmm. all he did was hire more people. <laughs> he hired more gunmen. <laughs> he figured, ha, ah, it's war else. But that all ran out in 1978. So I actually knew him 10 years. Okay. So for the last 10 years. 10 I'm years of his life, yeah. 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 Uh... In, in, interesting. Uh, any uh, anything anything uh, about him that stands out in your mind? Interesting or different? His accent okay. and the fact there's something else that was interesting. Um, and and this really I I'm confused about it a little bit. He had a, um, a social club on 26th Street, huh? and we were down at the social club a couple times, 
And I hear people talk about the 26th Street crew, the Taylor Street crew, and that's all kind of in the same area because there were other social clubs down there. He wasn't the only one. He had an office across the street and he had a card room. Um, it was on the second floor and a card room on uh, the north side of the street. The south side of the street, he had an office that was up on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So that's where he went to do his business. He didn't do business out in uh, Oak Lawn. Dare I ask, but what type of businesses? Uh, gambling, brothels. Uh, I think he was into just about everything. Did extortion. Kind of extortion. Yeah, did he have some kind of legitimate front? Not that I ever knew of. Not uh -oh. that I ever know. His son, Carl, uh, worked for the Secretary of State's office. Uh -huh. He was uh, where you go to get your driver's license fixed. And that was very convenient for the rest of the people, too, because he used to get titles for the cars in Chop Shop mm -hmm. when he was doing you know, the Chop Shop business. And they would go to Carl. And Carl would straighten out the tag numbers and everything else and give him a new car or, or a new uh, what you call it. Right. Now, um Speaking of all of that, that was all uh, in Chicago Heights too, right? The Chop Shop War, or Chop Shop Wars, all went on. It was all over the South, south side. side. Yeah, I mean, there was, it was kind of like an open territory. I mean, we had to stay out of. I got kicked out of uh, Chicago Heights in East Chicago, Indiana, by the steel mills with the slot machines with Kurt. Mm -hmm. But that didn't mean he didn't expand all the way to Hillside, places like that. Uh, going out as far west as the Calsag Bridge, uh, Willow Springs, things like that. Uh, actually, he had something to do with Kurt in the um, – he had a lot to do with Milwaukee Phil, but he had something to do with Kurt and the Valley View Yak. I think Kurt paid him tribute to it, you know, for having that place. He got that on a 99-year lease for $1 a year, and it was gorgeous. It had a band shell and – all different kinds of things. Buddy Rich played there. All the big bands played there. Poco Harem. All the young you know, people went there, too. It's a juice club. He couldn't get a, a liquor license. Huh. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah. I was just talking to my wife about starting one of those up um, over breakfast today. Uh, strip club. But a juice <laughs> club. Well, if it's a juice club, you could do the full nude. But if it's a strip club, then you can only be topless. Actually, we weren't talking about starting one up. We were discussing how they operated. But anyway, <laughs> um, why does that happen? So, so I, was, I, was, I was just going to say, I don't know why you said that. Are you going to have 26 mm -hmm. girls where they roll the dice for you, too? <laughs> just, just... It's Vegas. <laughs> you can get a gaming license. <laughs> so, um, so, so now... Uh, Jimmy Katura, by the way, you said he was called the Owl. That's how I was first. Uh, I was first talked to him. They said they call him Jimmy the Owl, and then later on, I heard about the bombings. But um, yeah, and then they, uh, he, the newspapers always called him Jimmy the Bomber. I remember. Um, I remember a. Um, what you call it? I just saw something on the screen. Hold on, Joe Collada. How's the script doing? It's doing. It's we're working on it. It is being worked on, and it's coming along. Hi, but Joe. How are you doing, I, guy? I keep this with me just about because this is what's filled with all of my script um, ideas and notes that I go through, and placing all of this together is going to be, um, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of. It's a lot of work, actually. What we've coordinating the times, the time oh periods, everything. Um, you have to have good eyesight, I guess. Now they referred to him as the owl because he had good eyesight at night and could see. And I don't think about this like I wouldn't think about it. Like that's got to be something that comes in handy if you're a criminal, having good vision at night, because normally you're you're probably working at night, right? I mean, going and so. I wouldn't think of that. I knew a bartender that was nicknamed the Owl, but that's because he was wise. You know, in this case, it really wasn't. And I don't know if you know why the hell a wise owl has. How do they even know that an owl's wise, right? Why would they associate? So something I heard I as a about. kid. I heard as a kid. Maybe because the hawks don't kill him. Could be. 
So, so, um, so he's called the bomber. He was called the owl and he brought into the outfit. He was responsible for bringing in, um, Billy Dauber, right? That's one of the many, one, one of the many, many brought in. Billy Dauber was, uh, killed at Will County, uh, right after he left the, um, uh, <clears throat> the courthouse by, uh, the Calabrasis. And uh, John Drummond was there, but he said, ah, we're not going to follow him home. If they would have followed him home, they would have had a story or they would have been dead. One of the two. Yeah. But he was arrested for uh, him and Charlotte, his wife, uh, were in trouble with uh, cocaine, which was coming on the scene in the 70s, 70s you know, and uh, he had turned informant. He flipped. And they knew it. Yeah. So it's time to get rid of them. Hmm. So that's what bloody, happened. Bloody murder. Bloody murder. Uh, they had a black car pulling in, in front of them, and a van pulled up next to them, and they opened the sliding door on the van, and shotgun and M1 carbine opened up fire, and he ran off on the side of the road, and uh, then they went up to the car, and did the coup de gras mm -hmm. just to make sure he was gone. Him and Charlotte both. Wow. They lived. Uh, they lived in Crete, I believe. Crete, Illinois. Right off of US thirty. Yeah, I know where Crete was. That was right next to Stager. It's still right next to Stager, Illinois. Yeah. Wow. That's so. That's where it took place, huh? That's what I mm -hmm. saw. Sean Pender's asking too. Yes, it wasn't it wasn't Crete. Um, yeah. All right. So, any of you do any of you guys have any questions regarding um, Jimmy Couture? If we stay on subject, and then I'm just going to open the forum up for you guys. But if you guys have any questions, put them in. Um, was Jimmy higher ranking than Joey Lombardo, Homer Bryant? Yes. Asking? Yes, at one time, at one time. But then again, he's the guy that told me. Go see Joey. He's a nicer boy. He'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. But that's how he looked at him. He was the younger generation, the young Turks that were coming up. Like he was a young Turk at one time. The next generation. Got it. So at one point, I guess he was to answer your question there. Yes, um, he was. Well, then, you know, Phil was, Milwaukee Phil was powerful too. But he was younger than him. Hmm. Oh, he was. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! 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 Of course he would have been much. Uh, Jimmy Couture was born in 1905, I think. Nineteen oh five. Yeah, that's what my screen says over here. Anyhow, so uh, Red, did you do any illegal work with the outfit, Rich Casillo? Illegal work? Mm -hmm. I sold pornography. So that was it was that illegal. Wasn't, at the time. Did you have to sell Larry Flint's magazine? Yes. You did. There was no... Yes. I'm now not going to sell how... I had to go down to Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And um, we were told anybody to distribute... I distributed some things, too. Right. But um, uh, basically, uh, Tony DeFalco was down there. Um, he was from a, a Distributors. Somebody from Capital News was down there. Um, somebody from... Uh, Leo Weintraub's organization was down there. Mike right. Galitta was down there. There were a lot of people down there. And we were all told, you have to carry it. I mean, they they would give us stacks of like 100, and you'd have to sell them. If you didn't <laughs> sell them, you ate them. That was it. Wow. Uh, they, uh, uh, Kate Guerrero said, how long were you in witness protection? I never was. I went through the undercover division of the FBI. Okay, so uh, Rich Cassio, there's a Katura in Middle Othian who looks just like Jimmy. Is that his grandson? It could be. He had two sons and he had grandsons. Well, there you go. It's a possibility. Uh, Gary Mushinsky said, did, uh, asked rather, he didn't say, he asked, did you uh, bring part of the skim from Vegas for Katura? Is that what was in I don't know bag? what was in that bag. I got it. I didn't even know the guy. And later on, when I saw pictures of him and stuff, I found out it was Johnny Roselli. 
But I wrote about it in my book. He came up to me while I was eating. I was stopping at the gaming tables. I was getting something to eat. Mm -hmm. And he sat down in my booth. And he said, uh, we got a mutual friend, the guy with the shoes. And there'll be a package for you when you leave. It'll be a grip. He called it a grip. And and who, was, who was this? Johnny Roselli. Okay. Roselli got it. And so I didn't know it at the time, though. I didn't know who he was. We didn't introduce ourselves or say our names or anything. He didn't even mention Jimmy's name. He okay. just said, we have a mutual friend, the guy with the shoes. And I said, okay. <laughs> now this, the, and you were at the Stardust. That's correct. Inside the Stardust. What was that like back in those days? Describe it. Oh, it was wonderful. It was gorgeous. Uh, I loved it. I, I did notice that there were no clocks on the walls. Uh, huh. There was no clocks anywhere. Uh, but this was 1968, and they actually had dealers that only dealt one, one deck. They didn't have shoes yet. <laughs> we're gotcha. dealing out the shoes. So... And the chips were different. Oh, that was chips back in, a lot different. Back in the day. You know, back in the day, you could take the chips, the casino chips, and you could spend them all around town. Yes. You could spend them in, you could go, get this, you could go to the grocery store, pay for your groceries, right? And you say you buy uh, 50 bucks worth of groceries, you give them a $100 casino chip, they'd give you $50 cash back. And I mean, it was like a currency in Vegas. Even at the church, the little church on the strip, uh, there's a, a little box and when you walk in and it says, we accept casino chips, a little slot in the top and you drop the casino chips and that that's the church of the guardian angel. And that has, uh, it's just a whole thing on itself, but it has casino chips in the stained glass and the windows. I mean, it's, it's, it's a trip, this, this church, but that little box of casino chips once a week, one of the elders from the church, he rounds up. Uh, all the chips and takes them to the casinos and cashes them all in. So he's the church's chipmunk. <laughs> that one didn't go over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. So that. So, no, all of that was true except for the ending. All right, honestly. But the government came in, they stepped in somewhere in the probably i think the late 70s early 80s and said no 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 more of this you guys when you the casinos are running low on money you guys are just you know just flooding the market with chips and then they trickle back in so you get an interest-free loan i have this vision it's like stores today that says we accept ebt right <laughs> we accept chips <laughs> okay victor uh victor hubler Hubler, I think I said that right. You mind asking Red how these guys went about extortion? What was the typical method? Did they cozy up to the guy or did they just send the goons over? What? People like Kurt Hansen used to just, he'd take big Bob Davids. Mm -hmm. and Always two guys. You never send one guy, two guys. And they would go to somebody and they'd smile at them, but they'd tell them that they were going to hurt him real bad mm -hmm. and he better pay up. But Remember, they were all in illegal businesses. They were bookmakers. They were something. They were doing something that if the police caught them, they couldn't run to the police. Mm -hmm. So when somebody took a piece of them, they took a piece of them. Right. Yeah. It's. Uh, hmm. I don't think Jimmy was satisfied with the uh, with the extortion as much because he found it was very lucrative to get into the chop shops. And he was the first to get into it. And then everybody else wanted a piece of it later on. They said, oh, yeah, there's a lot of money in that, you know? Yeah. But he kind of uh, controlled it originally. Let's check this uh, from DJV16457. Hi, Red. Do you know anything about the FBI investigation at the Board of Trade in the mid-'80s when they had agents wired up in the pits? Thanks. No, I really don't. I heard stories um, about... People that were actually that worked at the uh, Board of Trade, where they would go out and um, use cocaine outside by the parking lot, and uh, they might buy it there or purchase it there. But I didn't know any agents that were working that. And you know, DEA just came around about that time too. So, hmm. uh, most of the guys, <clears throat> most of the guys that were uh, DEA had transferred over from IRS CID. I knew several. Jay Woolley was one of them, and uh, several other people like that. So, 
They were all part of the same department. They weren't with the FBI at the time. They were that's the too, department. That's too funny, Mike. And he said, in Tennessee, food stamps used to be able to trade for everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's well, you can't around here. I'll tell you that much. Some of these people will trade their food stamps for meth. <laughs> Larry Larry Lapper, who who actually ordered the hit on the bomber on Jimmy Katura? I don't know who ordered it uh, exactly. It must have come from the top because I knew Accardo knew about it, and he you know he was told to retire a long time ago. I mean, he was given a lot of time, maybe twenty years, and he never did. So um, I would kind of guess that uh, it came from Accardo. Accardo. Uh, Tony Accardo, but it was actually uh, Joey Lombardo that shot him through the windshield. Ah. He, he, two men went up to him. I don't know who the second man was. But you don't know who ordered it? Not really. You can only guess that it, it had to be uh, Accardo. Okay. Because they, they had him kidnapped, and I mean, the guys that kidnapped him weren't low, you know, low-level guys. They were the, the were up in Wisconsin, they had bosses up there saying, Jimmy, what's the matter with you? We, we told you to retire. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that would have been a Yupa and people like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Gary, uh, well, here, uh, uh, Don Pizzallo is asking, did Red ever hear of John and Dominic Roberts, Roberto from Chicago Heights? Roberto. John and Dominic Roberts. Roberts. And then I've heard the name Roberto. Roberto. Yeah, from the Heights. Roberto. But I never knew them. Okay. They worked for Al Palato. Okay. Um wow. Sorry, I'm just looking through these questions here. Uh do you know any Peoria people? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Peoria was kind of there was nothing in Peoria or Piatone. Or any places downstate, can't key. It just mm -hmm. wasn't around then. Gotcha. So uh, while you guys are typing in your questions right now, um, by the way, I'm going to throw a card up here uh, for you guys to click on. Uh, if you want to check out Red's uh, channel, he has some of his uh, stories on there. And uh, also, if you uh, want to check out uh, my personal channel where uh, I'm right now vlogging about uh, keto because I'm doing the keto diet. And uh, I'm trying to get myself back into shape. I mean, when I first moved to town, I was in that show, uh, The Thunder from Down Under, you know, the, the, you know, the, the dancers, the Chippendale guys. I was in, you're laughing, Red. Why the hell are you laughing? Like, are you, you don't believe me. I'm telling you that I was, I got my, I got proof right here. Yeah, yeah I, I knew you were going to do that. That's why I was laughing. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I can't help it. This is the kind of shit that I do when I'm sitting around bored. So anyway, um, so anyways, there'd be a card up here. You guys... Subscribe to Adam's channel here. We love you. you. You guys could check out that channel. Like I said, I'm just vlogging little daily vlogs and some recipes and all that kind of stuff. So Ronnie Miller, did you uh, know any Cicero folks is what uh, he was asking, Red? I did when I was younger. But mm -hmm. they, you know, they all went to prison. <laughs> okay. They went away. <laughs> they all went on vacation or went to college or whatever. Yeah. All right, DL, Red, did you know uh, Jimmy Leonetti in the Melrose Park area? Well, he was working no. with Frank and Friends. No. No? Okay. So, Kevy O just got your book autographed in the mail. By the way, if you go over there and check out Red Red's channel, you can get his book. Um, Gary Mushinsky says, I hope you like of, it, guy, Kevin. Speaking of your book, Gary Mushinsky said that in your book, you referred to an associate named Lenny. Was this Lenny Cross? And what was yes. your relationship with him? Lenny was kind of a partner of mine. Originally, um, what happened was he, um, I had these these attacks, these agoraphobia attacks or these uh, panic attacks, and we didn't know what they were. And so um, I needed somebody to do my bidding, to go out to court or whatever is necessary to go someplace. 
So that's the Lenny that I refer to. It is Leonard Cross or Lenny Cross. Some people call him Lenny. Some people call him Leonard, depending on who you're talking to. Excellent. Um, glad that you're enjoying it, Ronnie. And uh, the Cicero folks just threw two dollars in. We're all in prison. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you guys are great. Um, yeah, and even Ronnie has family from Cicero. So, uh, okay. Um, anybody want to jump off of the uh, subject matter? We'll take. Uh, you know, you can bring up questions about whatever for the next uh, for the next little while here. Um, Sean Pender. I knew a guy in Stager named Tom Bounds. Claimed to be related to Tony Spilatro and was hit and killed by a train. Hmm. I don't think he was uh, related to Tony. That's a, that's a, not an uplifting story there, Sean. <laughs> it's a really bad story. <laughs> um, Could have been a cousin or something like distant, distant relation. A buddy of mine, he said to me, he said, I'm watching this YouTube channel about this hobo. It's a hobo that rides trains and he gets in the gondolas and the, I mean, the gondolas and the um, uh, box cars and he rides them around. He even rides them into Canada and back. I didn't even know hobos still existed. This guy rides these uh, train cars around and then, uh, and then all of a sudden he wasn't making any more YouTube videos. So he looked around online. This guy was wearing his backpack and he was standing a little too close to the Amtrak train came by. Boom, caught him and took his ass two miles down the road. No more YouTube. So that's it's like Sean's story. I'm telling you. And it's just anyway. So who was the boss of Melrose Park? Oh, wow. What time? What time? I, I, I really don't know. I mean. I really don't know. At, at what period of time? I, I would assume that when um, Accardo was there, that he was the boss. I mean, it's like Joey Lombardo. I mean, he had his, his own little thing over there, but this is back in the, I'd say, 60s or 50s or whatever when he lived there. Right. I would imagine that was, I mean, respect was paid to him. And he had a lieutenant or something like that under him. Got it. But I really don't know. That's the honest answer. I don't know. Okay, I don't. I, I, Lenny, me and Red is like this son. All right, so no idea what that means. Oh, hey, Chris, yeah, Stoby the hobo. That's it. That's the guy. See, Stobe, Stobe the hobo. Yeah, or Stoby the hobo. Yeah, that's the. See, I'm not crazy. There's other people out there that also watch this stuff. <laughs> hobo riding around on a train car. Do you know Joey Bag of Donuts from Bucktown? You know, I heard that name so many times, Joey Bag of Donuts, but I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I heard that name from. I really don't. Hmm. Well, any, uh, any luck finding Nancy Splatro? No, Pam. Um, I certainly haven't. Um, I'd let you know if I did. And uh, yeah, it's John. You watched uh, you watched him too. Yeah, it was a uh, pretty wild. Anyway, um, he was great. Did he really die that way? Yes, he really did. That's that's from what I uh, I heard. Yes, Dan no, wants I'm to know you're Italian. I'm Irish. He's got the red hair. And uh, yeah, I'm Italian. It's turning a little bit gray. <laughs> I'm a little bit Italian, and I'm a little bit Polish, and I'm a little bit black. And I'm a little bit Middle Eastern, and I'm a little bit Jewish, and I'm a, no. Can you mix religion in with the uh, nationality? I don't think that works. Anyway, no, I'm not Jewish. I'm just kidding. Josh and Jesus, was there any wars between the outfit and the Irish mobs when you were working? No, that was all over with. They were consumed by. I mean, uh, they didn't care whether you were Irish, if you were Polish, if you were uh, Greek, whatever nationality you were. They were consumed by the outfit. Jewish, okay. whatever, Polish Jews, Russian Jews. Yeah, so there wasn't anything. Okay, Keith Helton, Red, you told Tony you were an FBI mole. Well, we're back to this. What was his response, and what if Lombardo found out about it? That's a two-part question. What was his response? Uh, he was uh, he he took a. We were drinking scotch, and he took a drink 
out of his glass. And he turned around and looked at me and he said, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) That was his response. What would have happened if Lombardo (laughs) would have found out about it? I don't think it would have been very good. I really don't. They were thought of me as a, a major liability because I was around them at, at Brandon Ogden a lot. And I saw a lot of different people. And I was videotaping, too, at the time. I was video, I had a Betamax, and I was videotaping weddings, and everybody showed up and everything like that. They they would have put two together real fast. Joy, Joy would have sent somebody to take care of me, I'm sure. This is the one thing that everybody's just like, there's no way you would have told me you would be you wouldn't be sitting here right now. Everybody says that. Everybody. Tony, and Tony was comments, a friend. There will be comments of after this video, I'm sure. I trusted Tony. I trusted Tony. And he uh, trusted me, obviously. Um I, it's a lot of trust. That's what I'm saying. That's a lot of trust. Uh and, and Paul, uh, Tony Padula asked uh, Anthony Ziz- Zizzo. Tony Zizzo. Yeah, yeah, Anthony Tony, yeah, same thing. Yeah, he. Uh, do you know him? No, do you know I anything didn't. about his murder. No, That's I don't. Know, I don't know anything about his murder. Everybody was up in arms about it in uh, Family Secrets. I know that they had thought that perhaps uh, Nick Calabrese knew something about it. Um. Okay, this is Culture C. Ever met or heard of Joe Lollardo? Who used to work for Joe Lombardo? No, never heard of that. No, and I think I would have met him if he worked for him, unless he didn't come over to uh, the spot. If he didn't come over to the spot, I wouldn't have known him. Okay, so uh, how closely did the outfit work with the Blackstones and Jeff Fort? Now Jeff Fort was the head of the Peastone Nation, which. Did they become the Blackstones, the Peastone Nation, or was it I'm not sure, but Jeff Fort was in um, was in MCC, and he made a call to Libya and was selling them rockets, American rockets. Right, that's what that's what he got busted for, right? Selling well, Libya he was busted for something else. But while he's in the MCC, he was trying to pull oh the deal up, and gosh. so they had it all on tape and everything. And I think he's if he's alive, he's still in prison. Yeah, well, I, I know that I know that uh, Frank. He's never Frank, coming out. <laughs> Frank, yeah, Frank Collada said that he met Jeff Fort when he was in prison, and that he gave him a phone number, or whatnot, and he ended up doing a, a, a meeting. A, a, it was a he was a preacher who owned a grocery store, <laughs> needed the grocery store. To yeah, bye bye. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, they so tore it. That's what I, I recall Frank saying about it. But anything about the outfit working with the Blackstones? I mean, anything else that you know about that? No, not not firsthand. I really don't. Okay. Okay. So, As a matter of fact, we we're kind of told to stay away from those people, stay away from those people. Ah, okay. So uh, here we go. Uh, hi, old barn shop. Uh, Rich Casillo. Cass. Cassio. Anyhow, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. There I go again. When Tony was killed, did the FBI ask you what? Did the FBI ask you what you thought happened to him? They tried to. Uh, they tried to contact me, but um, I was upstairs in my my room. I stayed up there for two weeks. I did. I just got drunk. Um, I didn't tell anybody until after the bodies were found. Really. Got it. Uh, Bruce City, thank you. Peace, Black Pea Stones, Blackstone, then the, the Pea Stones, and then Frank start. For, Jeff Fort started the L Rukins. The L Rukins. What were the L Rukins? <clears throat> they were one of them. the toughest street gangs in Chicago. They were kind of a conglomerate. Some people came from one street gang to another street gang. What and they ethnicity were of the street gang? Pardon? What ethnicity? Black. Okay. So Afro American. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's um uh did the outfit ever work with the outlaws MC? Not back in the old days. Um uh-huh. I hear things now where it's happening, you know, like in the eighties or nineties or something like that, or nineties or two thousands. But back in the old days they didn't even bother them. They had so much muscle on the street in the seventies and eighties, they didn't need those guys, that's for sure. Yeah. 
Homer Bryant, uh, thank you. Jeff Fort is in Supermax in Colorado currently. That's where he belongs. <laughs> That's where he's in the Supermax. Anybody that gets is anybody that gets on a phone and wants to sell uh, heavy armament to another country, and they get caught, they belong in a place where they should really stay. <laughs> All right, so I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this that this happened to me today. So I was down visiting my neighbor. I had a couple of neighbors, and uh, one neighbor, he, um, I, I call him Flat Earth Eddie, you know, <laughs> and because, because he um, thinks, you know, that the the Earth's flat. So, uh, <laughs> just listen to me a second, okay? I mean, I'm, I didn't mean to get off subject for a minute, okay? But I'm going to tell okay. you what I heard this morning. So. So he's telling me today, because he's got all these, you know, there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world right now, and he knows all about them. These tunnels that are underground, under the country, and how the, I mean, it's crazy. Oh, he's one of these conspiracy theorists. It's a little bit, but I mean, it, you know, you want to believe him, because the stuff that he says, it, it sounds, you know, he talks about all this QAnon and crazy stuff. So anyway, uh, JFK Jr., is still George. alive. Yeah. Supposedly he said. A friend of mine in JFK Maryland tells me the same thing. He's alive. And I said, JFK yeah. Jr. still alive. And there's pictures of him floating around on the internet alive right now. And, um, there's well, you have a picture of you with it down under. I mean, uh, it, it's Photoshop, but you know, <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing. I mean, you could, and now with all of the, the, um, what do they call them? Deep fakes. You could put deep fakes up, and yeah, it's it's pretty, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's, it's pretty hard to, to to really believe everything you see. Bob Dog, two thousand, and that's coming from a magician. Bob Dog, twenty ten. Did Johnny No Nos run what was left of the outfit until his death in twenty eighteen? Yes, he did. Yes, okay. he did. How did you meet Joe Lombardo? Um, I met him at American Bonding. Uh, uh, Jimmy Katura sent me to him. Okay. He said, go see Joey. He's a nicer boy. And Kurt Hansen brought me to American Bonding. Kurt Hansen was also a bondsman, a bail bondsman. So he was useful in that, but he lost his license. Uh, he got a felony conviction. Sure he wasn't trying to buy the RPGs from Libya? No, he was selling. <laughs> he selling the RPGs. He still he had them stolen from a military base, and they were going to ship them to him. Okay, uh, Omar Gaddafi. Oh my he gosh. actually okay, spoke to Omar Gaddafi. Okay, idiot. Uh, the MCC. <laughs> Red, is it true one of the uh, one of Tony's brothers stole a rare stamp, the upside down Jenny airmail stamp, when it was on display in Chicago? I never heard about it. Dennis Paulson's asking that. And if it, if it was, it would have had to have been Vic. I, I know I know nothing about that. Uh, Larry Lapper, Red, do you feel that for the small window in the late 50s and 60s that the outfit was the most powerful organization in the country? I think it was all the way through to the 80s. Okay. Um, I know several people, Joey Lombardo, uh, Frank Schweiss, people from the Grand Avenue crew, you say Chicago doesn't dare come in there. They get their asses kicked. Or New York, rather. New York doesn't dare come in here. They don't want to step on our toes. You're uh, gone. You just left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, okay, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Just... Uh... Lost it. Um, let me work on my camera, and while I'm doing that, um, I'd like to make a public announcement while you're doing that. Please, people, stop telling me to stop smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you. I, I know you have my interest at heart, but you know I got a mind of my own. We all make choices, and that's my choice. Well, if you want to smoke, you can go ahead and smoke. But you know what the uh, repercussions are. I do. Every okay. time I talk to a doctor, they tell me. Every time I talk to a pharmacist, they tell me. Wow. And actually, in Florida here, they every every commercial on TV and the radio, 
says uh, smoke free America. You can get free patches and everything from the state. They don't have any smoking anywhere here. Wow. And you're still smoking there. I smoke in my home. I smoke out to outdoors or in my car. Yeah. Well, but there's no buildings that you can go to anywhere where you can light a cigarette anywhere. Nowhere, huh? Nowhere. Yeah. Well, Vegas was trying to do that, but that's just never going to, that's just, is not going to fly in Las Vegas where, you know, casinos, I mean, look, people who gamble are people of habit, creatures of habit. And, and if they, say, yeah, and they don't want to get enough from the table and saying, I got to go out and get a cigarette. Yeah, take a there, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Let them leave the casino. No way. All right. So, uh, I am trying. Did to... I own or run the Bijou on Well Street? No, that was Steve Tushin. And Frank Schweiss was about to murder him. And Wayne Bach, they were on him like every day. I used to watch him, clocking him. They were going to grab him and murder him because um, they asked me if I could take over the Bijou and run it. I didn't know the Bijou. That was Steve Tushin. And he oh. took good beatings for it, too. Actually, uh, Schweiss killed Paul Gonski, his partner. He eliminated one partner, put another partner in his boss, who used to be a, a janitor, used to push a broom. That was Steve. Steve actually came to me one time, or he sent somebody to me with a bag full of money. A paper bag full of money because he was getting robbed like every day and uh or every night and um he said would you watch out for my place like you watch out for yours because we only had one robbery that was it did your panic attacks subside Years later, no, they they subsided way before I left Chicago, way before I left, uh, like two years before I left. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't have left. Um, it was one of those things. Uh, I kind of get a kick of it now. It's gen genetic with me. I have a hot spot on the base of my brain. But um, I get a kick out of people when uh, they were asking me all kinds of questions, psychiatrists, whatever, at the time. And they were saying... Uh, Kind of like, do you have uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome? You know, that sort of thing. Is that what caused it? And I get to kick out young people today that are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress syndrome. And I look at their lives and they don't look that stressful to me. <laughs> well, a lot of things can cause it, right? I guess. I guess it, it depends on how sensitive you are to certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So let's see here. You put a guy in jail who killed two kids. Um, oh, Rich Cassio wants to know this. You put a guy in jail who killed two kids. You mean three kids? Three boys. Right. Two Petersons and the Schuler, or the one Peterson and two Schuler. Schuster. 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 Thank you. Uh, did the family or the police ever thank you? Yes, the family did. The police did. Um, they actually gave me, uh, the state's attorney's office gave me an award and the, um, a plaque and the ATF also that worked with me. They threw me a big dinner when I was in Chicago. Um, what Matthew Vanek, can you imagine if Adam talked like Borat, LOL? Ah, like I make a sexy time with my sister. Yeah. I'm making a sexy time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm making a sexy time. I mean, I'm just like Jimmy Katura. I'm sorry. I just, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, there you go. That, that's for you, too, Gina. Um, I'm Adam. Very hey, nice. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Uh, Gigi, did you like my book? If you did, try and write a review on Amazon. There you go. And if you haven't checked out... Um, Red's channel. Click up in the card over here. I'll put I'll put a card up there for you in the channel. Oh, and you can look at also my I have a personal uh, a vlog going right now about you know my keto. So and it's good. Guys, it's good. I, I like lost it. I've lost ten pounds, and I started this last Wednesday when we got off air. I was like, I'm starting right now, 
and I'm going to start vlogging every day and I've been vlogging every day and that's, uh, that's, you know, it's, it's going well. And I'm showing how to make pe like cauliflower pizza and stuff. So Adam, I need to share the pic of Adam as Borat in a, in a banana hammock. <laughs> Gina, you're, you're too funny, sweetheart. I love She's you, a though. sweet kid. I like her. <laughs> Uh, I'm loving the book read. Uh, she'll leave a review, she said. Thank awesome. you, dear. Okay, so Matt Vanek wants to know what motorcycle clubs did the outfit do business with? During my tenure, none. Mm -hmm. Although I did be just before I was finding myself. I was young, stupid. Right. But um, I rode with the uh, Chicago Outlaws at that time. I was a probationary, and then I made Made my uh, colors. Hmm. Uh, okay, so the guy who killed the kids, which that was Kurt. Kenny. Kenny. Kenny, Kenny Hansen. Hansen. Ken Han well, I get the two of them confused because they both start with K. So Kenny Hansen, uh, the guy who got the kids, did he get murdered in jail? No. They, again, they he got beat up a lot in jail, and it always came up when I see it in the papers. He slipped and fell on the ice. He had this happen. He had he got his teeth knocked out. They said he needed dentures. You know, different things happen. He really and even in the courtrooms when they were moving him, um, when I was in court with him, and the sheriffs were moving, they bang him around, knock him down. He had his leg, his leg shackled and um, hand shackled, and they would not knock him down, kick him, all kinds of things. He believe me, he paid. He paid. Yeah. Like Rotuno said, the only thing the bad part was. He didn't live long enough in prison. Yeah, right. He only spent, what, 14, 12, 14 years, something like that? Uh, from 1964, when he was arrested, mm -hmm. he was in the county jail, until um, 2008, he, he died in prison. Ah, 2008. So. Right by Family Secrets, right around Family Secrets. You're welcome, John. Anton B. Proud is um, saying it's so awesome to see where Frank's story took this. Adam, you rule. This is so amazing. Congrats. Thank you, Anton. I'm, I guess, yeah, thanks. Uh, Red, what motorcycle? Hit the yeah. like and subscribe. Hit the like and subscribe. Yeah, by, yeah, guys, hit the like button, by the way. We're just coming in here. Um yeah, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Down in the in the description below, there's the links too. If you want to check out uh, my other channel or you want to check out Red's channel, there's links in the description uh, so you guys can, can see that. If you just want to listen, I'm doing daily vlogs as well. And if you just want to listen to me ramble about nonsense and what's going on in Vegas and what's going on with, uh, you know, with, with my, uh, with, with me and with what I'm eating and whatnot, um, Check it out. By the way, Adam, Adam's the one that told me way before he went on the diet, he told me to start the keto diet, the keto diet. Yeah, and, it's true. And I really, it's done very well by me. How much have you lost? Over 20 pounds. See, over 20 pounds. And I started last Wednesday. I've already dropped 10 pounds in seven days. It's no, it's no, it's no joke. And I don't think it works for everyone, but it, it works for me, for my body type. It does anyway. So. It can make you hyperactive and have a lot of energy. You have a whole lot of energy. Uh, did you know Joe Andriaki, the builder, Red? No, I met him. I didn't know him. Okay. Um, Frank Marcello. They say Gianni Russo was the biggest earner in Vegas. There you go. <laughs> he earned a lot of things in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> a reputation. <laughs> Good, yeah. Big, big reputation here. Uh, Johnny Fratto. Was Johnny Fratto an inducted member of the outfit? Bob Dog's asking that. I don't know. I really don't. I've right. heard stories about him, but I really don't know. An outfit boss was Chicago police on the outfit's payroll? Are you kidding me? I'd say 50% of them, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, if they didn't have their hand out, somebody put something in their pocket. <laughs> okay, before I go really long into this, Space Monkey wants to know, do you know Ar Arthur J. Williams, Chicago counterfeiter? No. Okay. He had a lot of print shops in Chicago. And Did you ever come across any good counterfeit money schemes? Yes. Yes? They, they went to prison, though. Okay. 
They wound up at Oxford. <laughs> As most do when that happens, yeah. Uh, how far into Will County did the outfit operate? Can you tell us all anything over. about that? All George over. Rodriguez wants to know. All over? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't. Will Will County was like a territory. Even Joliet. I mean, that whole area was uh, was controlled. Jimmy Couture was out there. Hmm. Philip Wright, Revenue Revenue Canada saws. I got to pay my tax by midnight, April 30th. I told them I already paid my street tax to Adam and Red. C.A. He's making a joke. He got to pay his tax by midnight, April 30th. He paid his street tax. Thanks, Philip. Oh, by the way, by the way, you can get a wake the fuck up cup <laughs> if you want. Just click on the uh, little wake the fuck up cup. And the oh, yeah. oh. It says that on one side. And look at it. It's got a cool picture of Frankie on the other side. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, Chicago outfit. Chicago outfit. Bill Crawley was Chicago reporter Art Pettacue connected to the out, Art, Art Patak. No, he was yeah, one of the. I finest. butchered it again. Art Patak. He was one of the. Damn. <laughs> Patak. It doesn't even look like Patak. It looks like Pataki. <laughs> Pataki. Art Patak was one of the best journalists. He worked for the Sun Times. And uh, he wrote a ar couple articles about me. And um, he was fair. He was a journalist. Didn't, he didn't throw in a lot of uh, junk. He only wrote about things he really knew. He researched them very well. He was a great man. He got a lot of awards. A lot of awards. Hmm. But the outfit did not control him. I can tell you that much. He spoke out against the outfit many times. Okay. Almost wow. like Leonard, Leonard O'Connor. I am Len O'Connor, WGN. Like, like Ned Daly out here in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, that thing of ours. Um, hold on. George Rodriguez. Another one from George here. Did you ever hear about the outfit run card games in Joliet? I certainly did. Joey Lombardo used to talk about it all the time. Okay. Some of his uh, rolling crap games went out that far. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Francis Tin Man Curry ran Will County from Joliet. For Joliet? Okay, so curious, everyone. Oh, Gina McKenna. Curious, everybody. I guess this means everybody. Curious, everybody. You just became the boss of the outfit. Who do you pick for your number two and number three guy? Put your answer in the comments over here on the side. Comment. If you 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 became the boss in what year, Gina? Like, Because you got to give a specific year. Yeah. Unless, of course, you could have anyone you want from the 30s all the way to the, right? I mean, wow. it, it, you've got to be specific here. But I like the question, Gina. So, yeah, who do you think? Let's say if you have any pick, right? Who's your number two, number three guys? If I had to pick, Allie just screamed from upstairs. She wants Frank Collada as her number, as her number two. Well, I'd want Tony. That'd be funny. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I gotta look at the comments. I gotta see this. Paul Rica and Tony Accardo. That's what Bob Dog's saying. Paul Rica and then Tony Accardo. Interesting. And Gina, yes, any year she said. So any year you can you can put in there any year. Okay, so uh number one, Adiamo, number one restaurant in Vegas, Detroit Mafia. Okay, Detroit Siggy. Um Bruce City, Frank Collada. Uh my mom was a cocktail waitress during the uh mob days in Vegas. Chris Johnson. Is it cool, man? Uh yeah, what are you saying, Frank? Frank, uh yeah, who's this? Sean Pender, Albert, Taco, and Adam. Get the fuck out of here, Adam. Not, not me. No, 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 no. Taco uh, was a little loose with his lips, and he had a bad ending, so I wouldn't say Taco either. <laughs> Joe Mama wants Johnny Russo and then you. <laughs> All right. <You're> right. <laughs> nice, nice match. Uh, Red, if you could have killed anybody in the outfit and gotten away with it, who would it have been? That's a that's an interesting question. 
if I could have, I mean, I could have, I could have killed several people, but I really didn't want to kill anybody. So, um, no one. If I could, I could have, I could have aced a lot of people. I mean, I could have aced uh, Joey. I could have aced uh, Vince Solano. I could have aced a lot of different people. I just didn't. Mike Galita. I could have aced him. I didn't. Huh. I just didn't want. To. I I don't believe in murder. I just don't believe in murder. Period. Never did. I never killed anybody. Just in case you're wondering. Well, you never wanted to either. I don't think. Oh, I never wanted to kill anybody. I suppose if somebody was trying to kill me, that'd be a different story. But even uh, Kurt was shooting at me. I could have killed him, but I didn't. Well. Uh, guys, if you're coming in, smash the like button. Hit the like button if you're coming in here so that this uh, this gets out there. And uh, be sure to check the comment, the, the details below in the uh, video, the description. Sorry, the description. Check the uh, description. There's a few um, there's a few links down there if you guys want to uh, listen to some more of uh, Red's stories. There there's stories you. about Sal DeLorenis. Yes, he's retired. He's living up in Wisconsin. And his son is on Facebook. <laughs> Under a fake name. <laughs> wow. He's a nice guy, though. He really is. You should I don't have know taken what he out. did. Did he have you work in the old days or not? You should have taken out Mad Sam. Old barn shop says. He, well, he would have been somebody that you... A lot of people say you should have done this, you should have done that. You have to walk in my shoes and feel the way I feel before you can even make that decision. If you wanted to, why did you do it, old barn? <laughs> <laughs> duped explained red any stories on sal de Laurentis? just the one i mentioned yeah. uh, he's a nice man he's a nice old man he's in his 80s he's uh mid 80s um i don't know he's just living his life bruce city maybe that scary looking jasper campisi is my number three he didn't look like he found any jokes funny ever no and if i quote frank he could beat you to death with his eyes flapping them well him him and katuso johnny katuso i knew johnny somebody asked me in one of our broadcasts if i knew any deputy sheriffs yeah. and johnny i knew i knew he was a deputy sheriff he never showed up though he was uh, like a bailiff in a courtroom he had the badge and everything but he was a ghost job so he carried a badge around with him and do what he wanted to do that thing of ours that thing of ours said, who is left alive from Tony's crew and associates that aren't in prison? I don't think there is. Left alive from Tony's crew and associates. Um, I mean, if you're talking hole in the wall, gang, meaning the crew in Vegas. Even back in was, Chicago, there's nobody left that was associated with them which technically was, but there's, there's a couple of guys that are still, there's actually one, two, three guys, four guys that are alive that I, I know that aren't in prison. Homer, I got your answer Homer. for you. I got okay. your answer for you, Homer. Homer. Did Joey control all the porn shops or was it divided by territory? It was only, I was the only porn shop that he had. Was um, it? Yeah. And um, basically, it was kind of given to Marshall Cofano to give him an income. But um, it was the kind of thing when Joey was in charge, when he was street boss, it was kind of like you could go into anybody's territory. It wasn't divided up like New York. You go into anybody's territory. You just had to go to the boss of that territory and say, hey, I'm opening up over here. I got a guy going in over here. And they let you. They cooperated with each other. If they had something they wanted to come into your territory with, they would call you. Um, Red, if you grew some pork chops, you could be the Red Elvis. Okay. Uh, Bob Dog. Um, hold on. Bob Dog. What's the guy's name from New York that was associates with Tony in Las Vegas that is still alive? He's talking about um, starts with a C. Joey Kuzum, no. Um, come on. What the hell was his name? 
claims that he was, or he supposed, he may have been, Frank didn't like him, I know that much. And he's still alive. He was on the movie set. He came on the movie set at Casino. Oh, meet with, he mentioned that? that guy. Remember he that? Met... And Frank's like, yeah, and he asked me not to stay, stay there while he was they there. They took a day off. Day. Yeah, because he was there for one day visiting one of the one of the actors, right, or something like. Don't right. you remember who was that? I forgot. It's I not. Forgot. It's not Kuzumano. That, that name rings a bell too, Joey but I don't. Kuzumano? I don't know. I can't. Anybody remember that? If you guys could throw it up there, Kuzu, Kuzu, Yeah, Kuzumano. That's exactly what I thought it was. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. Hey, Does Cindy. Hello. To know if uh, the FBI ever paid me any money. Yes, they did. I used to fill out a receipt. I wrote about it in my book. It said I used to fill out a receipt every time I did receive some money because I would only go to see them. They didn't come to see me. They didn't want. They didn't want to blow me out of the water. But I would sign a receipt that said for cigarettes, cab fare, and expenses, twenty five dollars. Right. And. During Family Secrets, it came out on the stand. I, I had to talk about it. That worked out to a dollar sixty-three a day. Yeah, not for much. Like, no, twenty-eight years. Yeah, two iron. Wayne Matecki is still around. Okay, so so look, here's here's why I just don't I don't like want to bring it up because I'm sure these people are just living their lives in peace and whatever and don't want to be bothered. But Sal Romano is still alive. Ernie DeVino, as far as I know, Ernest DeVino is still alive. Switched his whole life around, became a Christian and, you know, uh, sobered up. And then I think uh, Leo Gardino is still alive. Uh, and Wayne Matecki, yes, is still alive. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't want to get into all that. But, yeah, anyway, I just, I don't, I don't say it because I, I know, I know. You guys just want to be left alive, alone, too. I think, you know. No sense in talking about them. Yeah. They're living their lives. Leave them alone. They're that's not what I, Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, somebody, somebody's even even said, "Well, why don't you guys? Why don't you get them on the show, dude? They don't want to come on here and talk about shit they did. They want to. It's in their past. I, I mean, that's. Then again, I, I could be completely wrong. You know, I could be completely off base with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't think they would. No, I don't. I think you know, uh, I don't know. That's just. Things get a little sticky, you know what I mean? When you, uh, anyway, you know, Red, the, everybody's telling you they don't want you to smoke because they want you to stick around. Old Barn wanted you to know. Thank you, people. folks. Thank you. All right. So, Larry Lapper, Red, the Jimmy the Bomber's highest position. At Jimmy the Bomber's highest position, who did he answer to directly? Good question. I believe it was Paul Rica. I know at the end, it, at the end of his life, it was Tony Accardo. Right. Okay. Ernie's a minister, I heard. Yeah. See, again, these people just don't want to be bothered. Give the guy that. a break. Yeah. You ever deal with any politicians in Chicago? And uh, can you name names? Any dirty politicians? A lot of them. And I don't want to name their names. Okay, so they're still around. <laughs> okay, it makes sense. I mean, hell, I wouldn't want to either. Then, GK, hello, Red and Adam. Was were any Greeks involved in the life? There yes, was, yeah, many were, Greeks. Okay. Uh, from the bottom to the top, uh, Nikki Stevenopoulos. Uh, he ran a strip joint that I worked at. Uh, Gussie Alex. Um, there were a lot of people that were Greek. Uh, Bulahana's family. The Bulahanis family was really interesting. Who's the guy that got blown up on 294 by Ogden? He was a union man <laughs> that had to do with, he wouldn't cooperate with the unions. And uh, is this the one on Ogden? 294, yeah, by Ogden. Yeah, I think Frank talked about that. Yeah. They put a car bomb in his car, or bomb, and then they remote controlled him. Um. So Anton, be proud. Weren't you afraid Tony would have shot you, even his friends? Well, first of all, he didn't have a gun with him at the time. Second of all, uh, 
No, I really didn't. Uh, I don't know if you've had any close friends, uh, but when, you know, I knew him for quite some time before I told him that. And the truth of the matter is he told me a lot of things that, as I've said in the past, I will never repeat. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's dead and gone. So there's no sense in even talking about it. But, um, no, I wasn't afraid that he was going to shoot me. I trusted him. He trusted okay. me. Rich Cassio, did Jimmy run 26th Street, or did he just have an office on 26th Street but run the Heights? You know, I didn't really ask, but he did have some power on 26th Street. I don't know what it was because it wasn't as far from Maxwell Street. All right, Matthew Vanek, I wouldn't write anything that has my mom and right where dude got blown in the same sentence ever again. Don't do that. It's bad. <laughs> he said my mom lives right where the dude got blown up. You know, so my mom and dude got blown in the same. It's not good. That's talk, That's like saying I was the next door neighbor where Tony Spalacha was murdered. Uh, how about those taxes in Chicago? Ouch. Yeah, I know, right? When was the last they time made me leave. Saw... They made me leave. My taxes were outrageous. <laughs> okay, you know, this is a good question. Hold on. I'm going to get to that thing of ours in a second. But do, uh, good question. Uh, okay, is, is there, Bob Dog, that's what I was looking for. Did Chicago get the nickname Windy City because of the political corruption? Or no. did it get it because it was windy? Or... Did it get it because politicians are full of hot air and they blow wind all over the place in Chicago? Which that was said in the newspapers a couple Which times. Which one is it, Red? Um, I believe it. They, they called everybody there. I mean, people around the United States don't believe me when I talk about it. But we used to talk about the hawk. And the hawk was the wind coming in off the lake. The lake effect. Mm -hmm. The hawk is out. And so it was a windy city. I remember on Michigan Avenue, they had lifelines <laughs> where you hang on to them to go to work and people were being blown away. There were gusts up to 60, 65 miles an hour. So you really think it's a windy city because of the wind? Yes, I do. I mean, it makes sense, but I think it's because of the politics. I think it's, it's because look of at the Chicago the politicians. Fire. Uh -huh. Pictures of the Chicago fire. You see the flames being blown. If it hadn't uh, been that windy that day, we wouldn't have lost all of Chicago. Right. Well, if uh, if the old lady hadn't put the damn um, uh, lamp on the behind the cow, <laughs> Miss O'Leary, you know, the <laughs> damn cow kicked the thing over, and the next thing you know, half of Chicago's gone. Nobody <laughs> ever proved that. But Detroit Siggy, any Slavics in the outfit? Oh, lots of them. Really? Yeah, Jehoda. Yeah. Jehoda's one. Like right off the top of my head. Walton Street had the worst Hawk Tunnel, Nick Macy said. Yes, well, they had one of the worst. Anywhere downtown on, on Walton or Walton in Michigan. The Street area. Walton in Michigan, he said, yeah. It was rough. Tevio, it's the wind from way back. Good huh. to see you, Nick. <laughs> Nick, do me a favor. Don't make more than one comment. <laughs> too late he already made two all right <laughs> so it's, uh the taxes are a joke here yes bad apple oops bad apple uh hey adam and red did you ever relay info to the fbi that you got from tony or did tony purposely feed you info no neither hmm. i never relayed anything that he talked about all the the only thing i did say to the fbi was that i told him that i was a mole for the fbi Right. And <laughs> I, the reaction I got was, uh, why did you do something like that? Why did you wait? And why did you do that? And I said, because I did it. A lot of things I did, they didn't agree with, but I just yeah. did. But I never conveyed any information. He didn't give me any information, you know, to pass on. Right. That would have helped in any way. But also, um, he didn't try and use me as a conduit. Right. For dis disinformation. Okay. 
Well, hey, everybody, we have, wow, we've kind of gone over a little ways today, but it's been fun uh, hanging out with you guys. It's been fun having you guys hang out uh, with us. If you want some more red, you want to watch some more red, there's a, whoops, right over there, we'll throw a little uh, uh, card up. You can go check out Red's channel. If you want to listen a little bit more of me, uh, I'm vlogging right now about, uh, I'm doing a daily vlog about losing weight on keto, and uh and I've been on it for a week now, and I've lost 10 pounds. And uh, Cindy Workman's asking, is father and son's pizza still open on Logan's Square? It was great pizza. I, yeah, I don't I know. I've never been. Square. Yeah, I've never been, um, never been there. But, Cindy, haven't ever been. Looking forward to seeing you, by the way, Cindy. Uh, she's gonna be out, you're gonna be out here in a little uh several more weeks so that's i'm looking forward to that dazzling urbanite thank you very much appreciate the uh, super sticker there pal and uh yeah if you want us to check out the, the the other channel if you want to uh hear how i'm doing with the keto like i said i lost 10 pounds seven days i'm getting back to my uh you know my stripper body right because you know that's when i first moved to vegas i was all ripped up you know i got pictures look picture see there i am right there that's me what's your goal adam my goal is my my goal is to get back to my original weight which is nine pounds and eight ounces <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go man i get the hell out of here chances of getting back to nine, nine sixteen are not good <laughs> <laughs> or nine fourteen better yeah yeah Hey, did you see me clean my shed the other day? Uh, yeah. You know what, guys? I'll see you later. It's been fun. Um, I'm going to leave you with this, though. I'm going to leave you with me. Hey, Luminous Grin. Adam is buff. You know it, man. <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys with this. Uh, I cleaned my garage the other day. My shed, not my garage. My shed. <laughs> like button after watching that something's wrong with you <laughs> Allie helped you out too Allie was there yes she did and the dog did too all right so red thanks again for coming on this redness day it's good to see you again thank you buddy all right man till next time god bless have a great time guys mob vlog